This video will be combining three of my videos called The Science of Fear. And you can find them individually on my channel War Backwards is Raw. I speeded up the motion and the sound and the pictures slightly so that the watch time would be reduced. Okay, the title of this video is The Science of Fear, Bogus Statistics. Now I'm taking everything from this book here called The Science of Fear by Daniel Gardner. And I'm not saying that I agree with everything in this book because this book is filled with hoaxes too. All right? So I'm just using this book to uh, stimulate my mind and then also create videos. So I do not endorse everything as truth in this book because it contains hoaxes as well. But it does bring out some excellent points. And the one point that we're looking at today is called bogus statistics. Okay, the U.S. Attorney General uh, in 2006 made a speech whereby he gave the statistic that any given time, 50,000 predators are on the Internet prowling for children. 50,000 predators are on the Internet prowling for children. So this book tries to examine this and say, well, where did you get that from? <laughs> and basically, it was derived from such things as it's believed the number of children that were murdered by Satanists or the number of children that were kidnapped or whatever. But when it comes right down to it, it was a, guess what? A bogus statistic. Which means it's just pulled out of thin air. Okay? That this whole idea that at any one time on the internet there are 50,000 predators prowling looking for children. Now how can this possibly be known? How could you begin to survey? How could you begin to measure that right now as you're listening to this video there are 50,000 predators on the internet prowling for children. There's absolutely no way that you can know this. So these statistics are invented. They are bogus statistics. And then once one uh, source quotes them, others will quote them. And then if you corner the ones who have quoted these statistics and say, well, where did you get that from? Well, you might want to say, I got it from, uh, from the uh, Attorney General's speech in 2006. But where did the Attorney General get it from? And if you keep examining it, you'll find out that there's no valid source for these statistics. Sometimes they're based on another statistic. Sometimes they are... Uh, are like mirrors of some other measurable statistic and passed off as something that was measured. But there is absolutely no way that anyone can come up with this statistic, let alone say, what, at any given time. Meaning right now, as you hear this, no matter when you hear it, <laughs> no matter who hears it, there's 50,000 on the Internet. So what you have to realize is that these types of statistics will generate fear. Now, as a, as a young parent with children, this would generate a lot of fear for a young parent or parents with children. 
Now there are other examples whereby there are bogus statistics presented and you can see my series that I did on radon, R-A-D-O-N, in the hoax of radon. But in that series, they will um, mention things like there are so many deaths by, of lung cancer per year, which is measurable. But then they'll go on to say something like 25% uh, of them were caused by radon. Now, I don't know that's the actual statistic, but I know when I was doing the research, um, that's a statistic that's used to help promote a phony system, which is basically someone comes and just drills some holes in your basement floor and puts in a pipe and then puts in an exhaust fan to draw the air out from underneath your house because there's radon gas. And if the radon gas leaks, you may die of lung cancer. <laughs> okay. Now, these are the kinds of things that uh, are done with fear, to create fear. Again, this author of this book refers to them as bogus statistics. You can see I circled that. Now, what he says down here, just below where I circled, is that the problem is that um, but the head and the gut, okay? The head might scoff and say, well, how in the world would you know there's 50,000 pedophiles? But once it's in your head, okay, you can't get it out of your head. Gut isn't sure. Gut isn't sure. So if you are a young parent, with children, even though in your mind you might say, there's no way anybody can know that, but I don't want to take any chances, okay? In other words, it's like sowing a seed. When they use these bogus statistics, they're like a farmer with a package of seeds. Now they know that the seed of a bogus statistic will grow in the mind. Even if you debunk it, it doesn't matter. Why? Because system one, the gut, or feeling, will fight system two. And the basis of the book is system one wins. Intellectually, you may say you cannot prove this, you have no statistical information, you didn't conduct a survey, but your feeling says, oh my gosh, that could be right. Or worse yet, once your imagination starts, you could say there might be 5 million on the internet, not 50,000. And by the way, he will get into that in another section about imagination. So um, imagination is is good if you're a child you want to play and have fun but imagination is bad once the uh, mass media knows how to harness people's imaginations and then their imagination can run wild so a young parent hears this and a young parent will get extremely frightened now please do not do not think that I'm trying to say there are no predators on the internet if you've heard that, you've heard incorrectly. I did not say that. And yes, it does happen. And you may have incidents in your community where you know it happened. Okay? But the point is, those who create fear, those who know how to manufacture fear, those who know the science of fear, can throw a statistic like this at you. And immediately... System one kicks in, and that creates the fear. And so now you are paralyzed by that fear. I would like to remind you that perfect love casteth out all fear. So it says in the holy word of God, and trust that God can cast the spirit of fear out of you, no matter what fear might exist in your life.
Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching these videos on the science of fear. More to come. Okay, this video is the science of fear. When system number two, thinking, does not override feeling. Now, the author of the book of the science of fear, Mr. Gardner, presents a scenario. Consider the following question. A bat and a ball add up to $1.10 total. The bat cost $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? So you think about that. You probably already have. And let's go on to the next paragraph. Almost everyone who reads the question will have an immediate reply answer 10 cents. It looks and feels right, and yet it is wrong. In fact, it is clearly wrong. If you give careful thought, and yet it was perfectly normal to stumble on the test. Almost everyone we ask reports the initial tendency to answer 10 cents write psychologists and they give his name. Many people yield to the immediate impulse, the surprising high rate of errors in this easy problem. Illustrates how rightly System 2 monitors the aspects of System 1. People are not accustomed to thinking hard and often content, content to trust plausible, impulsive that comes to mind. Sorry I can't read it too well, I'm trying to record and read, and I'm having a little trouble there, but you can read it. Okay, now, what is the correct answer? I'm sure you want to know. The correct answer is the ball is five cents. The bat is one dollar and five cents. So that the bat is exactly one dollar more than the ball. But immediately, the impulse of your mind is, the answer is 10 cents. Now this is to show you how, when you're, when you're watching television, or a documentary, or anything, something has flashed in front of you very quickly. Immediately, the impulse will take over, which is your feeling, system number one. Remember, system number one is your reaction, or your feeling, your immediate reaction. Okay? Now that's what happened to you when we did the problem. Immediately the feeling was it's 10 cents. Now your head probably wanted to kick in system two. However, system one was blocking system two because system one was convinced that the correct answer is 10 cents. Now this is exactly what happens to the mind when individuals watch the news or documentaries. Everything is basically structured around system one, feeling, gut reaction. Everything is structured around overriding system number two, head, thinking, critical thinking. In other words, critical thinking is basically abolished through the mass media. Hence, everyone runs around in system one, gut feeling, gut reaction. And the only good way to try to get out of the system is to use system number two, or your critical thinking. Now, of course, I always try to bring in the Holy Word of God, the Bible, because that will correct your thinking. 
You can't live under impulse or feeling. But yet, that's exactly what the mass media does to all of us. Now, in my experience, I did some teaching at one time, and I taught for a company that works with students who want to improve their skills. And I was in charge of SAT English. And in the SAT English, you have them read something, and then there's like four options, A, B, C, D. And one of the things that I tried to drill into the students was, do not use your impulse. You read it, and you go, oh, the answer clearly is A. Resist that, and then begin to use critical thinking skills. And one of the ways to use critical thinking skills is to use what's called POE, process of elimination. So once you can eliminate, say, items C and D, now it's down to A and B. And you might want to go with A then once you know that you got rid of options C and D because C and D are ridiculous. However, the key to improvement was to get rid of living by impulse or by feeling. Now that is exactly the key to exiting the system of fear or the culture of fear. Use thinking to override feeling. And that can be done by simply absorbing what is said to you in mass media and then sitting down and critically analyzing it. For example, if you were to watch the news, you watch it and take notes and then sit down and do research and critically analyze what you were told. And you might find out that basically you were handed BS. <laughs> However, most people will watch the news and then go to the next program on the television set and never conduct any critical thinking about what they were told on the news. Now, I'm an advocate of, of don't watch any news, all right? But I know for most people, that is difficult for them. They won't do it. So the only thing that I can say to them is I'd like to challenge you to critically analyze what you were told. In other words, go to system number two and let system number two, your head thinking, override system one. And that will help anyone, at least partially. Now there's more to getting out of it. And of course, you know from my videos that you've got to bring in the spiritual aspect and that is the Holy Word of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit. With the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Word of God, and you're using your head thinking, almost everything that is given to you in the media system, you can debunk quite easily. It took me a number of years to develop this habit and develop this ability or skill. But I want to say to you, my friend and listener, you can and you will be able to do it too. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your viewership and I appreciate your comments. Thank you. End of video. Hey, this is about the science of fear, and it's based on this book, The Science of Fear, by Daniel Gardner, how the culture of fear manipulates your brain. So I'll be doing snippets from this book. In the book, he mentions that basically we have two systems. System one is your gut reaction or feeling. System two is your head or your thinking. Now, most of what happens in the media is system number one. I'm adding my commentary to his uh, taxonomy of how our mind works. But system one is basically the system that is used in the mass media with particular to television, movies, internet, anything that has visual, video type film experience. Now, system number two mostly is for your print magazines and newspapers. Now, what is the most effective? In my opinion, system one, because it generates feelings, and then the feelings overrule thinking. And so basically what happens is people become prisoners to their feelings. 
and this system is unable to kick in and redeem them out of system number one. So for example, right now, um, the culture of fear. There's a great amount of fear right now. And I've made attempts to use system two to override system one, but it doesn't work. Because once that fear feeling develops, it's very difficult to remove it from the individual. So I'm going to just present to you some little slices of the pie from this book, The Science of Fear, by Daniel Gardner, and I hope that you will enjoy them. You need not be afraid. It is said in the Bible that there are about 365 references that begin, do not fear, be not afraid. And it is also said that that is true because there's one for each day of the year. So do not be held captive by the feeling of fear. Use system number two, your thinking, your critical thinking, and also your knowledge of the Bible. If you're not familiar with the Bible, I would suggest that you begin reading it and reading it as soon as possible. Because what is in the Word of God will help you to overcome fear. Watch out for system number one. The media, television, movies, documentaries, even videos on YouTube want to create inside of you a gut reaction, a feeling of fear. And once that feeling comes in, it's hard to get, out, get it out of your mind, get it out of your body, get it out of your system. So if you don't even allow it, you don't even allow system one to engage, you'll be better off because you can use system number two to just keep thinking your way through all these hoaxes that we're subjected to. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Okay, if you want to see those videos, or three of them. I put them together. You can find them on War Backwards is Raw. I'd like to thank you for watching and the video.